said she would only do it for a very limited run. I think she's still in it. Yeah, I saw her. I'll tell Bruce and, that. Um, she, uh, her brother was uh, one of the assistant editors uh, in yes. Dino's place in North Carolina. Ready? Yeah, okay. So we're sitting here catching up on our mutual acquaintances, right. uh, Betty Buckley, who was in Tender Mercies with you, and, and uh, Norman, her brother, was an editor it, on this one? Well, not on this film, but he works for Dino De Laurentiis, and he was working within 20 miles of uh, where we were working in Southport, and he was also an editor on Tender Mercies when we all did Tender Mercies, so it was like catching up with old friends. Yes. <laughs> Well, you're no newcomer to Dallas. You oh, spent no. time there. Uh, and uh, you were doing a, a, all theater at that time, weren't you? I did a lot of theater, a lot of dinner theater and commercials and industrial films. And, you know, Dallas workers just work everywhere. We're all over the place. Did you find that very helpful experience? It's very good training, and it's just, it's lovely to be in a small community where everybody knows everyone. And uh, it, it was, it's limited only in the amount of, of uh, job offers. That's all, the only way it's limited. But there are some incredible actors in Dallas working at the Shakespeare Festival and the Theater Center and, and Theater 3. And, you know, I don't want to miss, forget anybody, but the people can come out of SMU. And it's a, it's a great, people that you meet there, you meet again in such diverse places. I mean, Beth Henley, who wrote this play, was at SMU before I came through Dallas, but we know a lot of the same people. It's amazing. It's a, one of those small world stories. Did having the Dallas experience, and of course you are a Southern girl by birth, was it easier for you to get into the rhythm and everything of Crimes of the Heart than, say, for Jessica and Diane, who are not Southern? Well, I mean, you'd have to ask Jessica and Diane. I don't think so, because I think the feelings in, in, in crimes are universal to all families. I mean, I think, for instance, the character I play, Chick Boyle, there's a member, everybody has someone in their family who is like Chick Boyle. It doesn't matter if you're from Dallas, New York, Atlanta, Minneapolis, wherever, you can, everyone has come up to me and said, I know someone just like that. I have to deal with someone in my family just like that. So. Uh, being in Dallas helps a lot with the accents, and, and I certainly, in, in keeping close to those roots, have a real innate understanding of certain structures within the family, but uh, not, not particularly. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Your character is not particularly likable, at least in many <laughs> instances. The audience is groaning, actually. Um, did you have any second thoughts about taking this role? Oh, no. Oh, no. I was so pleased to be offered this role. See, in, in uh, Tender Mercies, I created, uh, actually Horton Foote created, a character that made such a, an impression on the minds of casting people and directors. To this day, people thought that's who I was, that I was this Madonna-like character who, this incredibly earthy, lovely, kind person. Now, the director has known me for a few years, and he suggested I play Chick, so that might tell you more about my own personality. <laughs> There's at least one real acting job between those two roles, and which one you want to believe is acting is left up to you. If you were to play one of the sisters, which one would you want to play? Oh, gosh. They're also, I'd like to do uh, all sisters at one point or another. I teach at the University of Georgia every other summer, and two summers ago I played Lenny with uh, a cast of graduate students. And I like Lenny's part because she has, she grows within the course of the, of the, of the play and of the, the screenplay. She has a definite growth pattern. But each character in this entire picture, I mean, Sam Shepard's character, David Carpenter's character, Herd Hatfield's old granddaddy. There's such wonderful parts to get your hands on and, and try to flesh them out and make them. They're so unique. Beth is such an incredible writer that you, you really thrill to get to do work with someone like that, or even Hort, like Horton Foote's characters. They're marvelous people. Well, Tessa, it's good to see you again. And um, I, I just have a feeling this movie is going to be a whopping success. Oh, from your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Thanks so much for talking with us here Thank in New York Thank you, Bobby. City. Say hello to everyone in Dallas for me. Very nice. Thank you. Okay.
now I have to, um, how are we going to move around and do yeah, these questions? Ahead. Okay. When is Ishtar coming out? Next sum, uh, May, I think. Oh. Does it look good? Does I don't know. Good? No, when I haven't seen it. I'm not yeah. in the inner circle, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. My part's real small. You have to go uh, oh. see me before the, you get your okay. popcorn. <laughs> uh, and cut me as widely as you can. Okay. Uh, well, uh, up above, yeah, something like that would be just fine. Okay. Are we rolling? Uh, you know, if you get, I, I'm so used to doing it without somebody. Why don't you just, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I'm used to talking to inanimate objects. It's better. Okay. Tess, do you think that you and Sissy Spacek having southern roots understand these characters better than, say, Jessica or Diane Keaton? Why do you think you were offered this role? Did you have any second thoughts at all about doing this role? Okay. Uh, I'll just give you some reactions now. Okay, thank you. 